Welcome to CEO Insights. I'm Marilyn De Guzman with Investing News Network. In this episode, I'm speaking with Tim Harrison, Managing Director and CEO of ASX listed Ionic Rare Earths, whose Magnet and Rare Earths development projects have been getting some attention lately, particularly in the context of emerging supply chains for the global energy transition. Hello, Tim. Hi, Marilyn. So let's start our conversation with just providing an overview of Ionic Rare Earths, your projects, and um, you know just your company's value proposition. So Ionic Rare Earths is developing both primary and secondary supplies of magnet and heavy rare earths. Uh, we've got a large ionic absorption clay deposit uh, at Makutu in Uganda, which is a development-ready uh, large-scale ionic absorption clay. Um, which is a type of mineralization which is prevalent in southeast, uh, southern China and, and Myanmar. And it's those type of assets that produce you know, greater than 98% of the world's current supply of, of, of heavy rare earths. Uh, so it's a project that has the capacity to help um, you know, the new economy develop an alternative, secure, sustainable source of, of magnet and heavy rare earths and um, recycling through a UK subsidiary called Ionic Technologies, which is now producing high purity separated magnet rare earths um, from end of life uh, magnets from wind turbines and other applications. Uh, and so developing that, uh, that opportunity in Belfast in the UK. Right. So speaking of, you know, developing stable um, supply chains. Geopolitical drivers are pushing the development of new supply chains, largely due, you know, to reduce reliance in China. What do you see is your company's role in contributing to this process in securing supply chains for Western governments? Well, I think, um, you know, producing magnet and heavy rare earths from both primary and secondary sources enables us to be an early mover um, in helping develop the source of material for the downstream supply chain to, to mature. So providing um, an alternative source of, of magnet rare earths initially from uh, our recycling subsidiary ionic technologies, which we can now put in the hands of, of supply chain partners uh, to be converted from the oxides into metals and alloys, um, which can then be handed across to magnet manufacturers uh, to produce the sintered magnets, permanent magnets, uh, to, to go into electric vehicles, uh, for example. And uh, I suppose where we are now, recently, um, you know, we've been able to talk publicly about collaboration that we're developing with um, LCM, so Less Common Metals, which is a metal maker in the UK, one of only uh, less, than, less than a handful of metal makers that exist outside of China, uh, being able to now convert that material into a tangible ma magnet that can be evaluated by um, our EV uh, partner in this in this uh, activity being forward. Um, so yeah, tremendously exciting. We're able to to develop those paths for, for value uh, addition and take the material all the way through to the final component. Um, and then once those relationships have been developed, we've got a large ionic absorption clay project, which uh, being development ready, um, we can bring to production very quickly um, to source that that larger demand that will come once the capacity exists outside of China. Right, and really, I guess government support is really key in this whole endeavor. And for your companies, from your company's perspective, there's been some big news that have taken place over the past few weeks. You know, of course, two of your subsidiaries getting some very strong public support from government representatives. Do you want to, could you talk a bit more about these two uh, developments? Yeah, so uh, we've had a really big month. Um, so I suppose fresh off the off the, um, off the the block is, uh, you know, I've just got back from two weeks in the UK where we were able to announce the collaboration with um, uh, Less Common Metals and, and Ford in the UK with our recycling uh, subsidiary, Ionic Technologies. Um, that's been funded um, by, by nature of a couple of grants that we've received from the UK government. Um, we've, tr we've received tremendous support from, from the UK government and Innovate UK. Um, so two grants to, to help us develop uh, and demonstrate um, sovereign capability in the UK. 
um, and then uh, another grant to develop the, the feasibility study and uh, looking at the stocks and flows model uh, across the UK to support a commercial facility in Belfast. Um, so tremendous, tremendous support. Um, if we look at, you know, going back to, to the start of this month, we had a conference in Perth, Africa Down Under, where we, uh, we hosted a delegation from the Ugandan government, including the Minister of Energy and Mineral Development, um, where we received a public endorsement from the minister stating that, uh, that she was going to approve our mining license. And so we're, we're patiently awaiting for the paperwork to, to follow, uh, follow through on, uh, on, the, on the commitment from the Ugandan government to support the project. So let's talk about that for a sec. Uh, the you know the the support from the Ugandan government on your um, on your project in Uganda. Can you talk about more about the developments in that project, where it's at right now, and um, what are the plans moving forward? So um, Makutu Rare Earth Project. So um, we've completed a feasibility study, which was required to support the mining license application. Uh, we submitted all the documentation, uh, finalised that earlier this year. We've been waiting for um, mining regulations to be approved and gazetted um, in Uganda, which was completed at the end of uh, end of August. Um, so now with all the documents in, we're waiting for the award of the mining licence. Um, we've got, got our environmental permits. Uh, so stakeholder management and, and engagement in Uganda has been tremendously strong. We've got support from the, the government on, on the development approach. And we're also building a, a demonstration plant at Makutu now. Uh, so in construction with a plan to, to start producing mixed rare earth carbonate later this year. Um, that's a mixed rare, rare earth carbonate that's 71% magnet plus heavy rare earth. So it really is, a, it's a market leading product. Um, and because of the nature of that, that product, a very strong engagement from potential supply chain partners in, in Europe, uh, North America, and uh, Japan and Korea. So um, everybody, uh, a lot of our potential partners are patiently waiting for us to get uh, all of our documentation uh, squared away from the Ugandan government before we can move on with the, the next phase of supply chain engagement. The other aspect of your business is Ionic Technologies, which is your recycling uh, business. Can you talk a bit more about what this technology is, what it means for your company's um, business strategy and how the UK is supporting your uh, Belfast facility? So um, Ionic Technologies' importance uh, to Ionic Rare Earths as an overall strategy is to be able to start to produce high purity oxides um, from recycled material now, which we can then work with supply chain partners on demonstrating capacity and capability to, to go all the way through to, to you know, sintered uh, permanent magnets for applications across electric vehicles and, and wind turbines, for example. Um, so the, the technology itself is, is a step change on a lot of the other technologies in, in the um, rare earth and magnet recycling at the moment in that it's able to take um, magnets of varying quality. Um, it processes the material via a hydrometallurgical process to individually separate out the, the magnet rare earths, which we can then take all the way to a high purity oxide and then provide those materials to the metal and alloy makers so that they can start to make the magnets with varying compositions of neodymium, praseodymium, dysprosium and terbium, for example, to make specific magnets for a, a multitude of different applications. So a lot of the other technologies at the moment in the recycling space don't have that ability to uh, produce the high purity products. They produce a, a mixed rare earth oxide, which has varying comp uh, compositions from one batch to another batch. And therefore a lot of uh, alloy and, and magnet manufacturers, especially those making the sintered magnets, work, will steer away from that material. Uh, so when we've presented um, our high purity oxides to, to some of our supply chain partners, it's the first recycled material that they they've been willing to, to take um, and it'd been a big vote of uh, confidence and endorsement on, on the technology and the products that we're able to achieve uh, with the technology from Ionic Technologies. And then with regards to, uh, I suppose, the, the support from the UK government, um, 
UK government has has identified that um, in order for it to to be able to produce the products to to, to compete and be able to to develop their own advanced manufacturing uh, industries, that they have to look at, at at alternative paths to to secure this material. Recycling um, of of permanent magnets has been something that's been identified uh, through through various uh, facilities within the UK government. Um, Innovate UK, which is a, a branch of the UK government that has been um, set up to, to help develop these, these new supply chains, has been a big supporter of the technology that Ionic uh, Technologies is developing. Um, so the grants that they've, they've, uh, they've awarded um, ourselves and our partners are all part of a, a systematic approach to be working towards a, a business case and a, a potential commercialization of the technology in Belfast. Um, Belfast is a unique location um, in that post-Brexit, it, uh, it has the ability to um, participate in both UK markets and the EU. So with that dual market access, um, access to material from, from Great Britain itself, but also potentially materials available from the island of Ireland, mean that we have a much wider potential pool of material that we can source um, and a much wider pool of potential supply chain partners that we can work with as we develop the, the business case and uh, work towards commercialization uh, in Belfast. Um, additionally, the infrastructure in Belfast is absolutely fantastic given uh, deep water port um, and very visible um, wind turbine deployment and decommissioning that's underway right now. So uh, yeah, it's a fantastic location for us to be uh, looking at commercializing the tech. Yeah, that's that's an interesting point, you know, beyond this technology, really, you know, beyond the UK market, have the potential to be rolled out globally. What's your strategy in terms of, um, is it just, uh, you know, just you're looking at the EU, what's the global strategy for this technology? Yeah, look, um, we've we've had um, inbound inquiries from, from a lot of uh, different corners of the world, to be honest, um, since we announced the the products that we produced uh, back in June. Um, so we're evaluating that. We are very conscious of our ability to make sure that we can deliver what we've set out to achieve in Belfast. But we are, and we have identified several potential jurisdictions globally where we think uh, commercialization of, of subsequent cookie cutter uh, recycling facilities could be developed um, over the course of the next few years. So. Uh, tremendously exciting for the the milestones that we've been able to to deliver with Ionic Technologies, um, and over the course of the next few years, we do anticipate there being more than one uh, recycling facilities uh, under the Ionic Technologies banner, with supply chain partners similar to those that that we're working with now. So, uh, really strong engagement from um, yeah potentially uh, Europe um, and North America where. We do have something that's very different um, from from current uh, recycling tech, and um, you know if we look at policy, you know the European Critical Raw Material Act mandating that uh, you know targets of fifteen percent of these newly dubbed strategic raw materials, of which magnet rare earths fall within, um, needs to be sourced from recycling by the end of the decade. So we do see substantial opportunity for the technology to be deployed in in, in Europe, for example, as a, as a key market. Right. And things seem to be developing rapidly for the company. Where do you see your company in 12 months' time? Yeah, look, at 12 months' time, I anticipate that uh, we're, we're well on the path to, to commercializing the tech in, in Belfast. Uh, we anticipate that on the back of one of the grants that we've recently received, we'll have a feasibility uh, study completed with a business case and, uh, and a very good understanding of the potential scale-up of, of what that looks like in Belfast. Um, and if we look at Makutu itself, uh, over the next 12 months, we've got uh, obviously the award of the mining license, which I hate to use the word imminent, but uh, we do expect it very, very shortly. Uh, we've got a demonstration plant that's in, in construction now. So later this year, we'll be producing mixed rare earth carbonates. Um, and uh, given where we are as the you know most advanced ionic absorption clay project uh, in the Western world with product that's not committed to China, we do see our, our ability to, to commit to some of these new supply chains um, being announced over the course of the next six to 12 months. 
Uh, so uh, tremendously exciting for for where we are as a business and and the hard work that that's gone into to getting to this point. Well, all the best to your company or for, uh, for those, you know, upcoming developments. Thanks, uh, Tim, again for gen- joining me today and sharing your insights. Thanks, Marilyn. And thanks everyone for watching. Join us again next time for another engaging conversation on CEO Insights. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new updates and interviews from Investing News Network. Until next time.